Hello. Nice to see you all today. Um, my name is Maya Israni. Um, a bit of an edit to my introduction there. Um, I'm currently the Director of Engineering at the United States Digital Service, uh, which is USDS for short, and that's how I will refer to it from here on out because it's a mouthful. Um, and USDS is a team of technologists at the White House. And I'm excited to be with all of you today to tell you a little bit about the work that we do um, and tell a little bit of the story of how you can bring your technical skills to help solve problems at scale in the federal government. But first and foremost, I want to congratulate each and every one of you today. Um, I really hope you're taking this opportunity to pause and um, congratulate yourself because this has been a huge amount of time and effort and it is no small feat which each, what each and every one of you have achieved. So a little bit about myself. Um, I taught myself to code when I was 16 years old. Uh, I started with Java, which was a bold choice. I don't know if any of you know that language, but it's not the easiest to learn right off the bat. Um, but I loved it, and I loved the problem-solving nature of it in particular. The idea that I was able to approach a large problem and break it down into small pieces and then use my technical skills to solve those smaller pieces and ultimately build a solution to address the larger problem. So I went on to study computer science in college and then I went on to become a software engineer in industry. Um, but what always drew me to technology wasn't necessarily the technology itself. It wasn't the frameworks or the languages or the technologies that I was using. It was more about the why. What problem am I trying to solve and why does it matter? And ultimately, that's what brought me to USDS. So as I mentioned, at USDS, we're a team of technologists that use computer science and design skills to deliver better services for people in America. And that's everything from making it easier for seniors to access important health benefits. That's helping students apply for financial aid for college. That's helping refugees apply to come to the United States. So how did USDS come to be? Uh, USDS was founded in 2014, and like a lot of good things, it was born out of a crisis. So back in 2014, the federal government needed to launch a new website where all Americans could access health care, some for the very first time. We knew that millions and millions of people were going to be trying to access this one website in quick succession, almost at the same moment. And that website, it was called healthcare.gov, uh, the day it launched, the website could not handle the load. And it fell over and crashed. And so a team of technologists came in and helped to stand the website back up. Now that crisis highlighted a dire need. Our government technology was outdated. And we needed top technical talent to come in and help modernize these very outdated systems. Because ultimately, these outdated tools and complex systems made it, in this case, impossible for people to access healthcare that they needed. And so that's how the United States Digital Service was born. We established a small unit in the White House um, to be deployed to different federal agencies and help work on various technology problems. And nearly 10 years later, we've brought in over 500 technologists to work on projects over dozens of agencies. That includes work with the Veterans Affairs, with the Department of Agriculture, with the Department of Labor, Health and Human Services, Small Business Administration, Social Security Administration. I could go on and on and on, uh, but I won't. Instead, I'm going to dive into a couple projects we've worked on recently that you might even be familiar with. So at the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, it became very clear that our public health infrastructure could not scale in the way we needed. We needed to understand what, were the, what was the rate of COVID cases across the country. And that meant that we needed a flexible, a durable, a scalable system for labs and clinics to be able to report COVID test results from people like you and me, and then report those results up to public health departments. And USDS partnered with the CDC at the beginning of the pandemic to help build out a number of those reporting systems. 
including one that I'll point to right now, which is called Report Stream. And this is an open source tool. You can go look at it right now. Um, and it's a very fast, easy, and free way for clinics and labs to send disease data to their public health departments. And then public health departments can get aggregated clean data on their end about their jurisdiction. And they can use that to inform policies and make sure that we're taking appropriate precautions to curb the spread of COVID-19. Another COVID-related project we worked on that some of you might remember, did anyone in the audience ever go to uh, covidtest.gov and sign up on USPS for the US Postal Service to mail you free COVID tests? Awesome. How was that experience? Can I get a thumbs up? Amazing, I see unanimous thumbs up. I promise I did not rig this one. <laughs> um, so that was a project that USDS worked on. Um, last year, President Biden announced that every household in America uh, would be able to order free rapid antigen tests and have them delivered directly to their home. And so to do so, USDS partnered with the US Postal Service. And we built out an easy, simple website for people to go in and order tests and have those tests delivered directly to their home. And the key here is building something super, super simple and making sure it's accessible, making sure it's translatable to different languages beyond English, making sure that someone can access it on a computer, on a smartphone, on low internet bandwidth, on a shared computer, maybe they're accessing it from a public library, and making sure that it was able to handle the load of millions and millions of people potentially trying to access it in the same, at the same time. We learned from healthcare.gov. And so the website launched last year with no hitches, and in a few weeks, people had COVID tests delivered to their front door. And that's really it, keeping it simple. Again, the technology is not hard here. It's really about building things that are easy and accessible for people like you and me to use. Uh, the next project I want to tell you about is called the Justice 40 Project. So for those that don't know, at the start of this administration, President Biden announced that 40% of certain federal funding would be given to disadvantaged communities that are marginalized, underserved, and have faced environmental racism. So in order to do that, we need to know what those communities are. And so a team of USDS engineers, data scientists, designers, and product managers set out to build out a map of the country and a tool for the public to access a map of the country to identify which communities those are. And we dug deep into census data to identify certain factors that we considered environmental factors, things like pollution, climate change, wastewater. And we launched a tool called the Climate and, Injustice, in, Climate and Economic Justice Screening Tool. It's an open source tool, public today, that you can use to zoom in on different locales and understand what are the different environmental factors in each community in the United States. Uh, and quick spoiler, keep an eye out for a big launch this Friday um, in conjunction with Earth Day in that space. The last project I'll tell you about is one that was teased at the beginning here. It's an introduction. Um, this was the project that I was leading before I stepped into the director role, and that was with the Department of Agriculture. So the Department of Agriculture in the United States is responsible for a number of nutrition safety net benefit programs. That includes programs like SNAP, formerly known as food stamps, women, infant, and children, uh, and the Farmer's Market Nutrition Program. So these are extremely critical programs that millions of Americans are eligible for and they can use to buy groceries and put food on the table for them and their families. And last year, USDS worked with the Department of Agriculture to improve the coupon system for people to use at farmers markets across the country. It's simply just modernizing the system to make it easier for people to access benefits and easier for states to process them. We're not often, like I said, working on cutting edge technology. We're just trying to make programs and services more accessible and usable for the people who need it most. And now, excitingly, uh, the news is broke that the Department of Agriculture is setting up its very own digital service. And that's ultimately where we want to go, that every federal agency has these technical folks in-house to help build these services a bit more scalable, more simpler, more accessible. 
So I mention all of these examples not just to brag about the work that I think USDS is doing. That's incredible. Um, but because I hope they provide a framework for each and every one of you to think about what you're going to do next. How do you want to apply your technical skills? You each have these superstar technical skills. And there are societal-wide problems that I'm sure you care passionately about. And you can marry the two to help solve them. You've already started to work on problems that in your community as part of the challenge that brought you all here today. And you can continue that. There are ways to, to continue to engage with your community and groups like Code for America brigades where technologists can come together with their skills and help local communities address problems. Um, some examples of projects that have come about have been mapping access to bike lanes or making it easier for students or the community to participate in student board discussions. And at some point in the future, if you join the federal government, you can help solve that at scale for hundreds of millions of people. And that could be in public health or climate or the safety net or immigration. Each and every one of you are here today because you are some of the top STEM students in the country. And so I'll leave you with a question of what good you're gonna do with those skills that you have. Thank you.